Today we're going to be breaking down this defensive clip when Mosab Amrani, who is one of the hardest punchers in kickboxing at my weight class, was just trying to take my head off. What did I do? How did I manage to accomplish it? And some tips for you to get your defense a little bit more on point. Two big announcements for the channel. Number one, we are in the middle of the Glory Glove giveaway. There's a link down below where you can get registered to win these Leone 12 ounce leather gloves, which are just beautiful. Number two, because we're talking about defense in today's episode, I am so excited to announce that my defensive course is gonna be coming out very soon and you can actually get yourself registered right now to be notified when it's all done and when I'm actually able to present it to you guys. Also, link down below there. So defense, as you guys know, is something that I'm very passionate about because I want people to walk out with minimal injuries, but it's also a massive part of you being able to win fights. Like they say in boxing all the time, it's hit, but not get hit back. And just for context, so you guys really understand who Mosab was, because he's a little bit out of the picture at this point, because after I defeated him, he fought a few more times, and then he retired. But this guy was so dangerous. He took out two-time K1 Max champion, Yuta Kubo. This guy was the king of the 65 kilo division, and Mosab went in and defeated him. And then he went up against Liam Harrison, and he dropped Liam Harrison in the first round very fast with a super powerful left body hook. He tried the same tactic when he fought me, and this guy was just a killer. So when you watch this clip, keep in mind we are facing, or I was facing, one of the hardest hitters in the division. And his whole game plan was to get in there and get me out within the first two rounds. So you gotta be on point with your defense. All right, for the beginning of the clip, you see me backing up, I'm backing up, he's coming forward. I know he's gonna go on an attack. As soon as you know somebody's in that attack mode and they're pressuring forward, you could, yes, stand your ground and block the shots. That's a great option. But additionally, you can have that head ready to move. And that's exactly what I did. I backed up, I backed up. I went, oh, he threw. And you dip that head off to the side. I've talked about how hard it is to actually get head movement happening when people throw at you and you're like, oh, I have to react now. That's a hard thing to do. And the easiest way to do this or drill this is to get somebody in front of you and just have them out of punch range, have them move forward, try to tap you in the forehead. You just stand there and just, do that little twitch just time and time and time again until it becomes muscle memory. Right after that, I fire back with a two punch combo. I'm backing up, I'm backing up. He goes on the attack. I do my slip and I fire back, bang, bang. Two big body shots because at this point in round number one, I'm just trying to slow him down. I'm trying to fatigue him and a fast paced fight is great, but also slamming in some body shots is gonna really bring his tempo a little lower. But right after my left body hook, I start to go backwards, I start to lean back a little bit because I see him firing a massive overhand. And it's not just me utilizing footwork, and it's not just me doing this, because if you get caught here, you're in a terrible position. I hit, I hit, I step back and I pull the head. Now this is a great position to be in for a split second, but you don't wanna end up in this extended position because if the second punch tags you, you're gonna be in big trouble. So once I step back and I get my head out of the way, right away I'm dropping it forward. And that allows him, or more so makes him, miss with the second punch. You get out of range, so they miss, and then when they try and close the distance, because they missed the first shot, they try and close the distance on the second, your head is in front. So first one they miss, second one, they come and they end up hitting you with the inside of the arm. No massive power there. I think I actually have to correct myself there anyway. It's a fade back and then drop my head to the outside because he comes one and then two. So I catch myself on the outside of the arm, which is even better. Because yes, you could bury your head forward and just take that off the head bicep or a little forearm, but even better is when they throw and the heads to the outside because the follow-up punch is gonna be so much harder to land. So, so far in this sequence, we have a variety of things happening. This is not just, oh, okay, Gabriel's just covering up or Gabriel's just slipping. It's the variety. I'm backing up, I'm making him draw into me, he throws, I get my head off the center line. 
I go on the attack, bang, bang. Right away I start backing out, pull my head out of the way, and then I get that quick dip so that that last punch just swings by my head. Then what happens is when somebody misses and they miss, they're generally, even if they're going forward, they're gonna take a pause. They're gonna take a pause from their attack and try and reassess what went wrong, what they have to do. That's your opportunity to fire back when people start thinking. And I was working with a really young kid today, a 10 year old on this, because he's very good at his backwards movement and he's very good at forward attack, but I was trying to teach him, look at, if you're backing up and you see them stop, you need to go because that's not when they're expecting it. They're expecting you to attack when you're here and they're waiting. But once you've backed up and then they're like, oh, okay, I can't reach them. That's the jump time. That's when to go. So that's what happens in this clip. I do my evasion. I get the head off the center line. I drop, I back up. I see him. Okay, he's still coming forward, but he's giving me more space. So get that quick low kick chop in and then follow with two quick punches again. Now you might be saying to yourself, well, why is that so important, Gabriel? This is a defense episode. But a massive part of defense is that people often say sometimes like the best defense is a good offense or a strong offense. I don't agree with that, but you do have to keep in mind that if you are solely focused on defense so much, this guy has no reason not to continue his attack. He's just going to keep coming and coming and you're going to get flustered by too much defense. So yes, I deal with some shots. I get my head back. I drop, I create more space and then I hit him just to remind him, oh, okay, yeah, you can't just walk forward and you can't just attack at will because yes, I'm in this fight and I'm throwing back. Offense and defense, obviously tied together. You need to throw both of them. Never just give somebody the opportunity to let 10 punches go on you because it's just gonna boost their confidence and they will most likely land something. Now, right after that, we're at that range where it's like, okay, he's getting pretty close and I wanna stop him. I use the front kick but he keeps coming forward. He does a very good job of getting my, backs to the, my, my back to the ring ropes. Once your back is to the ring ropes, you start to run out of possible options, right? You're more limited in what you can do defensively. So right away, what do I do? I go, okay, I'm gonna shell. Because the shell is great when you don't have as much movement. You can't get the footwork. That's the problem with having your back to the ropes. He throws a jab cross at me. I go parry, parry. And then he goes to throw the big hook. And that's when I decide to do my fade back. Learning to move backwards on the ropes and not keep everything flush. If you keep everything flush and you try and back up, you're just gonna get sprung back. But if you can learn to lean on the upper rope, you do have a little bit of give. You can get that distance. And then as I go forward, I don't walk straight in, I get my head off the center line and I close that distance because letting somebody just tee off at one spot is a recipe for disaster. You want to take a couple shots, get your head out of range, and then again, get your head closer. So they're always dealing with these multiple ranges. That's what I love about this clip here. I'm at that punch range, but he's not hitting too hard. He goes to swing hard here, but I don't wanna stay back here, and the ring rope obviously won't allow me, so I get really deep in and close that distance. And then at the end, again, another example of head movement forward and back. Once I've got my head to the inside, I hit him once, he goes to hit me, I get my head forward so he misses, and then I get my head back out so the next shot is going by. So what do we learn from this one little clip? What is the big takeaway that you should have? You want to mix all your defenses together. It's not just me doing this, and it's not just me doing this. I have to be able to slip sideways, I have to be able to move my feet. I have to be able to use the ring ropes. I have to be able to bring my head forwards and backwards so it makes it hard for this guy to land hooks. There's so many elements in this one little clip and the more you can be fluid in your defense, so you're thinking, okay, I can block, I can shell, I can roll, I can move my feet, I can go forward and back, I can mix that up. The more you can do that, the harder it's gonna be for anybody to land any substantial shots on you. And this, guys, is just a tiny example of 
how detailed we can get on defense and why you're most likely going to want to sign up for my defense course where I'm going to have one of my brothers, but probably both of my brothers doing drills with me. And we're going to show you how not only you can properly block techniques, but the drills you can utilize to improve your own skills. Again, link for that is in the description below. Just throw your email down there and get yourself registered. And it doesn't cost anything to get registered. It's just going to give you the opportunity for me to email you when this course is close to completion, which will hopefully be in the next four to six weeks. And then I can just email you, but guess what? This awesome course is ready and you can jump on it and start really getting good at defense. And why is it so important to get good at defense? Once your defense is strong, you become a brand new fighter because now you're confident and you can really open up offensively. It's not just that defense is gonna help your defense, your defense is gonna help your offense as well. And we're gonna have some fun over the next three or four weeks because I'm gonna continue doing episodes like this where I take a clip where I did a great job defensively from my fights or maybe a poor job and I explain to you what I did wrong and I can really show you, okay, small little glimpses of how in depth we're gonna get in this course. So let's call it to everybody. Thank you for joining me today. As always, train hard, and I will see you back here soon for another video.